Hey everyone, just recently I've decided to start a series on PDHP. Now, um, this series will be covering sports medicine, core 1, core 2, and as well as another option which will be um, improving performance. Now for sports medicine, I'd like to give you a brief overview about what it's, what it's mainly about. And uh, what, I, what I'd like to say is that sports medicine is probably one of the best options. And I really enjoy it, mainly because it's, it's got a lot of knowledge that's useful in real life as well. And it has a lot of stuff that's easy to remember and easy to tackle down for the HSC. If you aren't doing this option at school, then I guess um, just uh, target the cause even more. But if you are, well, I, I hope this does help you. Now, um, to start off, we have critical question one, which is how sports injuries classified and managed. So, um, what I'm going to be doing over the span of the next month or so is I'm going to be splitting up these videos in parts for every single critical question. So, for this critical question, I'll be splitting up into four parts, and for the first part, we'll be covering ways to classify sports injuries. So, we'll be looking into direct and indirect injuries, soft and hard tissue injuries, as well as overuse injuries. On top of all of this, we'll be giving specific examples of these injuries and like how they actually reflect on these classifications. This is all set inside the syllabus dot point, so I hope I'll be covering all this in this video alone. Okay, so let's go down to direct injuries. What are direct injuries? So direct injuries are a result of external forces to the body. So I'm going to give you some examples now, and I hope you can just list them down, or if you can just listen to me carefully. Um, so for example, a direct injury, I'll just write now, A direct injury could also include something like getting hit by a ball in cricket. So um, uh, it has to be a direct force. It has to be an external force to the body. So it's something which is getting hit to the body. You could get tackled. You could get a ball onto your body. Like get hit. You could anything could really happen as long as it's a, a force towards the body and you get hurt or you get an injury. That's considered a direct injury. So for some quick examples, I'd just say you know getting tackled. Um, something like, you know, getting hit by a cricket ball. The, the possibilities are endless. There's so many things you can get injured in, in sports, and it's, if it's, as long as it's something towards the body, it's an external force towards the body, then it's considered as a direct injury. So, um, uh, mind you, I'll go up again and I'll try and explain something. So we have a, a few ways to actually classify these sports injuries. We have direct and indirect, we have soft and hard tissue as well as overuse. Now when we look into this, direct and indirect, it, it could be uh, describing an injury either soft or hard. And, and for overuse, that's a completely different thing itself. But I don't want you to look at these types of classifications as themselves. In some way or another, they can be linked together, and it's just something that's that you need to know. Um, just just know the general definitions that I'll show you in this video alone, and just try and make some links between how these injuries actually are classified. Okay, so let's get back on track. So for direct injuries, I just said that there were external forces to the body, and that's I've just listed two examples there. Now, in this case, getting tackled could cause some bruises, and getting hit by a critical cricket ball could also ca cause some bruises, which are, for the technical term, called contusions. So I'll just write that here as well. Okay, great. So now, what are indirect injuries? Now, you might be wondering about what indirect injuries are. So, basically, they're a result of excessive external forces in the body, which result, finally, to a damaged body tissue. So just imagine this. Imagine if you were bench pressing. And imagine if you did not bench press correctly. The forces inside your body might have had too much force onto them or it might have been excessive and these external forces inside the body now I'm not talking about anything on the outside of the body I'm talking about inside the body the pectorals um, they could have had too much force on them and therefore it could have result, result, resulted into a damaged body tissue so in this case in my example I talked about the pectorals in bench pressing so indirect injuries there's a, there's a lot of different things it can even be just uh, suppose uh, the way people walk and, and like if it's incorrect uh, it, the incorrect technique and whatnot, but indirect injuries refers to forces inside the body. That's pretty much all you need to know, and just one simple example. The bench pressing example should do. Okay, now I'll move on. Um, I'll just write here bench pressing example. Okay, so I'll move on now and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about soft tissue injuries. So, what are soft tissue injuries? Soft tissue injuries 
uh, are actually injuries which can occur to muscles, tendons, ligaments, cartilage, or skin. So, um, uh, as I've stated here, soft tissue injuries should be treated through RISA. Now, I've got a little asterisk next to RISA because I'm going to be talking a little bit more about it later on. And um, I just wanted to introduce you to the acronym. It's just an acronym. It's for every single soft tissue injury, we use the RISA approach, which is a methodological approach of actually treating for soft tissue injuries. Okay, so that will be taught later in lessons for sports medicine anyways. I'd just like to introduce it to you now. Next, skin injuries can actually include a number of things. So as I said in soft tissue injury, um, it could be injuries which could occur to any one of those things, also including skin. Now skin injuries themselves could be lacerations. Now I want you to think of a knife. Now if you had a knife and you had like a cut in your hand, that would be considered as a laceration. And then you have abrasions, so suppose falling down on the floor and getting a little graze on your hand, that would be considered as an abrasion as well as blisters. We all know what blisters are. It's when you have too much moisture and too much water which captures all in one location through friction and turns into a blister which has water in it which you then pop. And lastly, punctures, which is also just another type of skin injury. Um, anything inside your skin which is that, like a puncture, as the word says itself. So I'd like to uh, give you a few, exa few examples of soft tissue injuries. Now, Soft tissue injuries, there's quite a lot of examples you can actually give for this, and um, I'd, I'd, I'd actually stick to a few things. So there's, there's one thing called tendonitis. So tendonitis. Now what tendonitis is, is that it's the inflammation of a tendon, and it's a result of poor technique. So uh, suppose you were squatting. If you were squatting incorrectly, um, just just uh, not squatting in the correct manner with a correct technique. If you weren't doing so, you might get tendonitis, and tendonitis is a is an injury which affects the tendons in our body. Or you could also get something like a, a sprain or a tear, you know, a ligament strain, which is a result of joint moving beyond its normal range of motion. And therefore, something, as an example, falling awkwardly in rugby league tackle. That's something that could cause a ligament sprain. So I'll just put another example here, ligament sprain. Okay, so I'll quickly move on to the next one. Um, what are hard tissue injuries? Now, this is probably really easy for you guys. All you need to remember is that hard tissue injuries include any damage to the bones or the teeth. That's pretty much all you need to know. And they often occur due to direct injuries, as you would think they would normally occur. So, obviously, um, if you get a, a, a footy ball straight into your face at an immense force and you lose your teeth, that, that would possibly be a hard tissue injury. Or suppose you landed incorrectly or... Uh, or you just you got hit by something on your hand and your hands uh, and your bones inside your hand broke that would that would be a hard tissue injury as long as it involves the the teeth or the bones and you know anything like fractures or anything like dislodged or cracked teeth even dislocated joints would count as a hard tissue injury so i'll, I'll write here you know dislocated joints fractures and broken bones. Okay, so anyways, now I'll now go on to overuse injuries, our last part. And um, overuse injuries, they actually occur more than you think. And they actually also occur a lot in children as well. Now, uh, uh, children, uh, the whole, uh, whole thing about children is that it comes up later in this topic. And um, we'll be talking a lot about uh, special provisions we have for children later on in this topic. So I'd just like you to keep in mind that overuse injuries is, is quite common. And what it actually is, is it's the result of minor repetition. Repeti Repet repetitive um, and sorry about that and damaging forces uh, through time which become a more serious inj injury so just imagine this uh, imagine that you had um, you, you were just playing tennis and suppose you swung the tennis racket a thousand times way more times you played a lot you played really really hard now if you were doing something incorrect or you had some sort of incorrect equipment or if it was just too much strain for your body you might end up having an overuse injury which is ultimately a, a more serious injury at the end it could have just been these minor repeating uh, and damaging forces which ended up leading to a serious injury so I'll give you a few examples here um, the, the, and before that, before I give you examples, actually, I'll just talk about the causes. So the causes could be, you know, uh, incorrect equipment. 
So imagine if you had a very big tennis racket and you're you were pretty small as a person. It would put so much more strain to your actual hand when you actually move it, or your arm even, just when you try and swing the racket. Um, it could also be due to incorrect technique. So if you're doing it wrong, it could also be a reason why. So if you were not doing it correctly, it could be a reason why an overuse injury occurs. And that's that's pretty much it actually. And these overuse injuries are, are very, very annoying. They they lead into a lot of pain and a lot of swelling, as well as a reduced range of motion. Uh just like to end end it now. Um for the tennis example I did give you, you can give an example in a test if you need to, and that's actually called tennis elbow. Tennis elbow is an actual condition and um it's I'll give you the scientific name just shortly after tennis elbow which is also referred to as lateral epicondylitis so lateral epicondylitis okay anyways so that's that pretty much covers everything and um i've covered overuse injuries hard tissue soft tissue as well as uh, direct and indirect injuries so i hope this does help clear some questions in your mind about critical question one and the f very first part of it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for updates.